What's up everybody, this is Lawrence again. For me personally, it was one of the most anticipated releases for this specific year. The reason for that is because I absolutely love the Vapor Max. I know a lot of people either love it or hate it, uh, but for me, it's one of the most comfortable silhouettes that I personally own. I have uh, two pairs of them. In addition to that, I absolutely just love the fly knit and the tech base kind of futuristic style that, are, that it really brings to the table uh, that nothing else on the market really does today. And without further ado, today we're here to review the Nike Vapor Max Utility in the triple black colorway. There was one big surprise in the bag that I did not expect. So this is actually the bag that comes with the Vapor Max Utility. Um, I'm sure this is a dust bag, it's relatively big, but it seems like you can actually carry it over your shoulder as well, um, since so it's strapped like this on the back. Uh, so relatively cool, <laughs> good for groceries or, or carrying your Vapor Maxes in. Uh, but I thought this was a really nice thing that, that Nike threw in that they don't usually do. And here is the Nike Vapor Max Utility in the triple black colorway. So looking at the shoe, it has the same outsole as all other Vapor Maxes and has in the past. It's done in this translucent anthracite base color, so it's not exactly black. You can see right through it. I'm not sure if you can see it on the camera, but if you look at it closely, uh, it's definitely not a solid black. This is where people usually start hating the shoe more than anything. It kind of looks like teeth, it kind of looks like dentures, there's a lot of uh, really funny things that people say about it, but for me, uh, it's extremely comfortable, and, and the reason for that is because of the way the sole is created. Uh, it actually comes into two places, and so it, it bends pretty easily when you're walking, um, and the sole itself, whenever you bounce onto it, is, is very springy, and I really love that about the shoe. The other major thing of note that people typically do not like about the shoe, and I have to agree with this one, is that it actually is very squeaky when you first get the shoe. Uh, if you ever walk on linoleum or anything like that, you'll start hearing squeaking from the bottom of the sole. Uh, after owning two, about maybe two to three weeks of wear, you're going to stop hearing it as much and it's not going to be as annoying. If you've ever worn an Ultra Boost, that Ultra Boost and that Continental sole will always make some type of popping noise whenever you're on type linoleum type floors. Uh, and that does not go away from what I can tell as, as I've had Ultra Boost and Ultra Boost soles in the past on different shoes. The most important thing to note on this specific pair is if you look very closely here, there is actually a midsole uh, which is not available on the regular Vapor Max. If you look at the regular Vapor Max, you can see that there is no cushion or anything there. It's just the, 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 the bubble sole. When I put this on a little earlier, I do think that they are a little more squishy. Uh, and so a lot of people are going to think that they're a little more comfortable, which is great. The shoe itself is obviously done in this triple black colorway. This is normal fly knit. Uh, I would say it's a little stretchier than you kind of expect from the regular Vapor Max, and it seems a little bit thicker as well. So the first thing you're going to notice is going to be these elastic pulls on the front of the shoe, uh, which is the major draw. So there are no laces on the shoe. Uh, it's actually a toggle instead, which is done by this drawstring over here. It's a completely different experience in terms of how, how it works, and this is much more similar to the Vapor Max Mach than it is to the original shoe. The knit on the side is also very uh, perforated, so there are holes in for, it, for its breathability. Uh, one of the things that I do want to note is that it does not seem like a shoe that you would want to wear in the snow and or rain. Uh, there's a lot of holes, it's extremely breathable, it's based out of fly knit, and so that fly knit is not water resistant in any way, so it's going to go straight into the shoe. So I think that's kind of interesting in that they released this, but they didn't go full out into releasing an actual boot, and that's still something I'm waiting for. Um, so I'm not sure if I'm going to keep this pair for that reason, I just feel like I need a Vapor Max sole with a true waterproof boot, and hopefully they'll release something with ACG or something like that, that would be amazing. At the front of the shoe is also the hyperfuse material that, that Nike is known for, and that basically allows it to have the, the shoe to have a little more rigidity and structure, uh, and also makes it last longer so that the knit isn't as easily ripped. Finally, on the back of the shoe, there is the Vapor Max logo that's done in a diagonal fashion. The, the back tab is actually uh, made out of some type of squishy material. It feels kind of like neoprene, uh, but a squishy neoprene, so I'm not sure exactly what it's made out of, but it's a, it's a very durable material from what it feels like, and it's relatively flexible as well. Uh, on the top of the shoe, you can see that there's a side collar over here, and there's also a back pull tab here, um, so you can help put the shoe on, and there is a hit of 3M on the pull tab, and the rest of the collar is this Nike swoosh shine that's uh, up top over here. As for the insole, you're going to be looking at this. Uh, it's a pattern that's very similar to the thing that you saw on the bag, and it does have Vapor Max uh, on the front over here. 
As for sizing, it's very much like any other Vapor Max that you may have owned or want to look at. Uh, you definitely need to go a half size up. The knit on this is actually significantly tighter than I'd expect from most other Vapor Maxes that I've tried on and have. Uh, so from that perspective, definitely go half size up. Uh, there are two gripes that I really have with the shoe. It's actually not that easy to put on. Um, other Vapor Maxes for me slip on relatively easily. Um, the mid color makes it a little more difficult and without kind of an, a front open lacing uh, the same way a Vapor Max typically has, which is a split tongue, where it's still attached to the shoe, but, but there are side grooves that are not attached to make it easier to put on. I wish they would have done that here. The second thing they have a gripe on is they really just didn't seem to do enough for the shoe. I mean, I love the style. It looks absolutely amazing, and it definitely is, is going to be great for ninja-style tech uh, outfits. The retail price for this shoe was $225, uh, with tax, and tax was about $245, which is actually a lot of money to pay for this shoe. They didn't really bring too much utility to the actual shoe. Uh, I doubt people are going to be trudging through snow or anything else be with this. And so for the most part, it's just another sneaker. Um, while I love the Vapor Max, I'd say that I'm probably going to end up returning these just because I feel like, I, although I love the silhouette, um, its usage is kind of limited, and, and in all honesty, I prefer the normal silhouette of the original Vapor Max that I already have. And so, um, maybe the Kushlan, after a couple days of use, might be something that I might enjoy more than the original Vapor Max, uh, but that's yet to be told. But as of right now, I don't really feel much of a difference after trying them on feet. If you like this video and you want me to make more of them, there's plenty of others that I'll be uh, releasing in the future. Hit the subscribe button down below. And if you want to follow me on Instagram, it's at MySqueakers. And this is what we've all been waiting for, the on-feet, which I do think looks pretty good.